So is this how it normally works? What? You know, you like you put on the perfect song, you make them a drink. Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 unscripted rom-com moments that were kept in the movie. So, okay, like right now, for example, the Hadians need to come to America. For this list, we'll be looking at some romantic and comedic improvisations that made it into the final cut of rom-coms. Let us know your favourite unscripted moments in the comments below. Number 10. Chest Wax Reactions The 40-Year-Old Virgin Take off your shirt. Okay. Oh, we're gonna need more wax! I'm staying. The chest waxing sequence in The 40-Year-Old Virgin is one of the most iconic movie scenes of the 21st century so far. It's one that makes everyone laugh and very thankful they don't have to endure this kind of agony. Oh, you f Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. That's just your job. And in case you were wondering, it wasn't all acting. The pain Steve Carell feels is real. Faking a chest waxing would have been very hard to do, so Carell really underwent the procedure. You pulled on two! You pulled on two! Why did you pull on three? Now, because they were only going to get one shot at it, they did discuss some things he could yell beforehand. Kelly Clarkson, for instance, was allegedly Seth Rogen's idea. Sweetie pie hole! Come on, see Yama! No, Kelly Clarkson! But the reactions of surprise from Corral are all real in the moment. Even the blood is real. Number nine, the mouth of truth. Roman Holiday. The mouth of truth. The legend is that if you're given to lying, you put your hand in there, it'll be bitten off. Every year, Rome is inundated with tourists from around the world, many of whom will, at one point during their trip, visit the famous Mouth of Truth mask and stick their hand in it. The large marble disc dates back centuries, but is most famous for its appearance in the classic 1953 rom-com Roman Holiday, starring Audrey Hepburn and Gregory Peck. Let's see you do it. In the film, Peck's Joe tells Hepburn's Anne about the legend that liars will have their hands bitten, and when he inserts his, acts like it's being chewed off. <laughs> that part was in the script. However, Peck took things up a notch by pulling his hand back into his sleeve and presenting the stump causing a very real scream from the unknowing Hepburn. Hello. You made it with that and you're all right. You know that. I'm sorry, just a joke. Number eight, the pocket spin. To all the boys I've loved before. On August 17th, 2018, Netflix released To All the Boys I've Loved Before, and a teen rom-com obsession was born. Is that sparkly bike out front, is that your ride? Yeah. The film became a hit on the streamer and spawned two sequels. One of the reasons it was such a success was the casting of the lead roles of Lara Jean and Peter, played by Lana Condor and Noah Centineo, respectively. Oh, so you want to use me as your pawn? Oh, see, technically, you used me as your pawn first when you jumped me. And as it turns out, Centineo did a little improvising throughout the shoot, including the swoonable moment when, with his hand in Condor's back pocket, he spins her around and into his chest. <laughs> it wasn't in the script, but according to director Susan Johnson, when he did it in rehearsal, she loved it and changed the shot to accommodate the move. Number seven, the dirty dancing move, Crazy Stupid Love. Okay, so then what do we do? What happens now, like logistically? What's your move? What do you mean, what's my move? What's your move? Like, what's your big move? So, you know how in Crazy Stupid Love, Ryan Gosling's character uses the dirty dancing over the head lift to literally and figuratively pick up Emma Stone? <gasps> Ah! <laughs> 
Well, that scene wasn't in the original screenplay, and you'll never guess how it made it into the movie. It was all because of Gosling. They say that truth is stranger than fiction, and the truth is that Gosling had actually used that move on a girl before. Tell me a big move. I worked dirty dancing into the conversation. Dirty dancing? When he told the story to the film's directors, they looked at each other and said, okay, that's going in the movie. Gosling wasn't thrilled with the idea at first, but sure enough, they put it in. You know the big move at the end of Dirty Dancing where Patrick Swayze picks up Jennifer Grey? Yeah. I can do that. Okay. So I tell girls I can do the move. I put on the song, Time of Your Life. I do the big move. And they always want to have sex with me. Number six, greeting Ned Ryerson, Groundhog Day. Hey, Phil? Phil? Phil Connors? Phil Connors, I thought that was you. Uh, how you doing? Thanks for watching. Hey, hey. In Groundhog Day, Bill Murray plays Phil Connors, a TV weather broadcaster in Punxsutawney, Pennsylvania, reliving the same day over and over and over and over and over. Ned! Ryerson! Needle nose Ned, Ned the head, come on buddy, Case Western High! Well, in one of the many daily moments he continually goes through, he runs into needle nose Ned Ryerson, a guy that he went to high school with, though far be it from Phil to remember. Ned, I would love to stand here and talk with you. But I'm not going to <laughs> see. Most of the encounters follow certain beats, but in one take, Murray went off script. Phil Connors, I thought it was you. Ned Ryerson. Yes. <laughs> I have missed you so much. Ned's actor Stephen Tabalowski begins the encounter like all the others, calling out Phil's name, but then Murray goes in for an unscripted hug and the rest of the exchange is improvised. I don't know where you're headed, but can you call in sick? Uh, <laughs> I gotta get going. Uh, <laughs> it's good to see you, Phil. <laughs> Number five, Haitians, Clueless. Ew, get off of me. Ugh, as if. For those of us who were of a certain age in the 90s, the film Clueless was a very important film, a film that taught us some very important lessons, such as high school boys are like dogs and that it doesn't say RSVP on the Statue of Liberty. And in conclusion, may I please remind you that it does not say RSVP on the Statue of Liberty. It also taught us the wrong way to pronounce Haitians. As the main character, actor Alicia Silverstone, embodied the brilliant yet ditzy Cher, one moment that stands out among many is the speech she gives during a class debate. So, okay, like right now, for example, the Haitians need to come to America. In discussing the people of Haiti, Silverstone mispronounces the appropriate demonym, which, according to director Amy Heckerling, wasn't written that way in the script. And so, if the government could just get to the kitchen, rearrange some things, we could certainly party with the Haitians. But Heckerling loved it too much to correct her. Number four, good thing it wasn't the fish. You've got mail. Matt is my father's son. Annabelle is my grandfather's daughter. We are an American family. Is there anything Tom Hanks can't do? He's a great actor and has multiple Academy Awards to prove it. We know he can direct, as we saw in the very underrated That Thing You Do. And we know now he can also improvise, as this scene from You've Got Mail makes quite clear. You'll notice he's carrying balloons and a goldfish, and as he leaves the bookstore owned by Meg Ryan's character, the balloons get stuck in the door. Good thing it wasn't the fish. <laughs> Well, that wasn't supposed to happen, but rather than break character or stop the scene, Hanks comes back with one of the funniest lines in the movie right off the top of his head. Number three, firecrackers and clearance codes, bridesmaids. 
I don't think you want any help. That's I think you want to have a little pity party. Oh. Yeah, I think Annie wants a little pity party. Pity what you want? Ow! You're an asshole, Annie. These days, Melissa McCarthy is a big star and recognized by many as one of the funniest actors out there. Her turn in Bridesmaids is a prime example of her comedic chops. Life is gonna, I'm life and I'm gonna bite you in the ass. Ow! Ow! What Sam might not be aware of is how talented of an improviser she is as well, with her unscripted wit on full display in the aforementioned classic. Okay, they used to try to blow me up. They threw firecrackers at my head. Firecrackers. I mean, literally, I'm not saying that figuratively. Perhaps the best instance of this comes during her heartfelt speech to Kristen Wiig's character, in which she talks about how she was tormented in school, but now is rich and has high-level security clearance. You know what I did? I pulled myself up, I studied really hard, I read every book in the library, and now I work for the government. I have the highest possible security clearance. Don't repeat that. According to director Paul Feig, that was all the stuff she came up with when we shot on the day. In that case, color us impressed. Number two, the jewelry box. Pretty woman. Do I look okay? Mm. Mm? Something's missing. While so much of Pretty Woman has become iconic in the world of romantic comedies, even the film's director, Gary Marshall, has called the jewelry box scene the trademark of the movie. I don't want you to get too excited. It's only on loan. Indeed, who can't picture Richard Gere snapping the jewelry box closed on Julia Roberts' hand and the unforgettable laugh that followed? Oh! <laughs> Although that wasn't how it was written in the script. Roberts, 23 at the time, was a little tired from late night partying. So Marshall told Gear to do it in order to wake her up a little. His plan was to use it for the film's gag reel. But during the editing process, they decided to put it in the movie and the rest is history. If you were gonna buy this, how much would it cost? A quarter of a million. <laughs> a quarter of a million dollars. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Pecan Pie – When Harry Met Sally If you can see a pecan pie and not instantly think or say out loud, But I would be proud to partake of your pecan pie then you would have probably never seen When Harry Met Sally. It's one of the most quotable lines from a film filled with quotable lines, but this one was never written in the script. But I would but, be proud. But I would be proud. To partake. To partake. Of your pecan pie. Of your pecan pie. Pecan pie. Pecan pie. Pecan pie. Pecan pie. Instead, it came out of the mind of Billy Crystal, who improvised the whole scene with a funny voice, from the paprikash to the pecan pie, as Meg Ryan just played along. Waiter, there is too much pepper on my paprikash. Although, if you notice, at one point, Ryan does turn to look off camera. She's actually looking at director Rob Reiner, who tells her to keep going, and thank goodness he did. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.